a brand has to pay, usually upfront for a defined scope, irrespective of how the content actually performs, which means it's hard to track ROI and proof all of that. So this actually gives a different, it, it realigns, I suppose, the incentive between the brand, which is driving down purchases and conversions with creators being able to earn from that point as well. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. 20 Minute Leaders is a proud supporter of Make-A-Wish Israel and tech to peace and is in proud collaboration with Secret Chord Ventures, J Ventures, Riverside FM, Fusion VC, Birthright Excel, J Impact, Leap, Google for Startups, and Hippo, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Hello, hello, and welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today, we're talking about the creator economy and travel. Meet Nicole TJ, the co-founder and CEO of Travis, a travel app that turns dream vacations into a reality while leading the charge on empowering micro-influencers who are changing how we discover, plan, and book vacations. Before co-founding Travis, she was an influencer who experienced the struggle and success of building their brand through partnerships and affiliate programs. She later worked in strategy and innovation consulting at Deloitte and she uses her knowledge in technology and her first-hand experience of being an influencer to inspire the mission and consumer goals of Travis. Nicole TJ, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Thank you for having me, Michael. I'm glad to be on here today. I'm really excited for us to talk about, you know, creator economy, travel, your own personal journey, uh, you've had quite a few different experiences before um, creating Travis. And so it's going to be a fun 20 minutes to try to unpack quickly, you know, yeah. what you've been up to and then how you're looking at this new world that we are in. And so, Nicole, tell me a little bit about, you know, yourself leading up to, to the formation of Travis. Yeah, well, I'm Nicole. Currently, I am co-founder and CEO of Travis. Um, you are right in saying that I've had a little bit of a diverse background. Um, years ago, I used to be a creator myself. Um, and this was very much, uh, focused on lifestyle, fashion and travel. And then I also worked, um, a lot in the influencer management space, managing influencer campaigns of many sizes. Um, and a huge bulk of my experience was actually also working at Deloitte Digital. So strategy mm -hmm. and innovation consulting. Um, for a lot of tourism brands. And so as you can see, I do have, um, I guess industry insights from a few different facets across the ecosystem. And interestingly, how they all come together with my experience as a traveler, you know, how do we actually uh, find our inspiration? How do we actually plan trips that we want to go on? Um, has been the combination of what leads to how we're building, um, at Travis today. And so. What led to sort of the insights that you have now about where we're at in terms of the creator economy and the travel space? You know, map out this landscape for me. Mm. So what we believe is that creators are crucial uh, for the future of travel, right? Um, we are at a point in history where uh, there's more creators in the world than ever before, creating more content than ever before. And the role that they're playing across industries, but in particular travel, um, has definitely shifted. So, um, we see that creators not only are creating content for the purpose of in inspiration, you know, discovery and inspiration, but this has definitely shifted over the last decade to be uh, a credible source of truth for, you know, influencing brand's preferences, influencing planning, um, decisions and off the back of that, influencing where people spend your money, right? So, this is um, where we see, you know, the rise of the influencer actually is also dependent on a huge shift in trust and where consumers are willing to place their trust um, away from institutions and to the individual. So this is where we see, uh, you know, there's such huge potential to be able to unlock the value that creators provide for their communities. Um, and we're seeing more diversity of communities because of the nature of the, you know, diversity of creators. And at Travis, we can also see that the biggest, um, the biggest pain point for creators or the biggest challenge that creators face is not having the ability to, uh, make an income or make a recurring income through their content. 
Um, so this is where Travis is enabling creators to be able to earn through their recommendations and start earning an, a recurring income through content that they're already creating. So from a consumer behavior perspective, yes. what really has shifted here? Uh, because what you're talking about is sort of a new, it's a new behavior where people make decisions not necessarily based on ads or, you know, what, or, or, you know, ad placement or just the recommendations that be here, but there's, there's something about community, something about influence that's happening in today's world that's, that's allowing people to make different decisions in regards to their own travel preferences. What, what really has happened here that shifted the world? Yeah, ultimately it boils down to the shift in trust, right? And I wouldn't say that it's been, you know, an overnight shift where, oh, suddenly everything is new. You know, people are looking at different sources of information now. I think this is something that has been changing and is already happening. Um, it's definitely not something that's brand new and people have to pick it up. Um, and this is something that we see when people are looking for, where should I be going? Um, where should I be spending three days? What should I be doing in there? And where should I spend my money on? More often than not, the, they look at social media, they look at Instagrams, they look at TikTok, um, and start to get that inspiration from that. So economics of this whole space, what's, what, what how, how do, how does this economics work in terms of, you know, the, uh, the, the, the creators, the consumers, the different offerings that they're coming into play. How does this whole triangle work? Yeah. So the way that the landscape works first, maybe I'll talk about that and then how we are combating that at Travis. So, um, the way that the creator landscape works, um, so far is that, you know, it's a, it's a known fact now that the income is unequally distributed and the top 1% of creators earn a lot of the money, right? And, most of the creators, they do it for free. Um, it's a way where they are able to, um, digitally through social media, be able to, uh, create new reach of the content than, that they've never been able to do before. Um, one of the interesting facts is that we learned through our research with about 370 creators now that, uh, of those who are currently earning any creator income at all, that brand deals make up 90% of this income but only about 10% of the content. So what this really goes to show is that, you know, there is so much content out there that is still deemed really valuable, still um, influencing real world decisions, especially to where to spend the money. But for creators, um, they are missing out on that chunk in the middle where they don't earn a cut. They, they, there's no way for them to earn a cut for, from brands, really, um, for the fact that they're able to drive these uh, bookings. And so really there, there is such an opportunity for us to be able to enable creators to start earning an income or to grow their income by having a new passive and recurring income channel um, that's directly re related to their, their content already instead of you know, something that's new and unrelated to the existing content that they're already creating. So the way that Travis is doing this is um, one of our core products for creators is called Bookable Links. And uh, creators are able to easily create a bookable link of um, a hotel that they're already recommending to their creators. So for example, I might have a hotel room walkthrough that I've just shared on Instagram stories, or I might have a 3D itinerary that I'm putting up on TikTok, for example. Um, people come to me asking, where should I be staying? Where should I go? And I will be able to create the bookable link on Travis that is monetizable for me as a creator. When I share that on any of my Instagram channels or my link in bios, for example, and my followers um, make a booking through that, I, as the creator, am able to get a cut of their earning. Um, and even more so, um, Travis works on a way where we enable both the creator side as well as the traveler side of things. So for travelers, you know, there's a huge path of discovery through the, the paths where, um, you know, people are already engaging on social media. And I get to the point where I see hotels being recommended, right? It looks beautiful. I understand how much it costs, I can see the room options from availabilities right from the point of the inspiration that the creators have just served me. Um, but, you know, I might not be able to decide right away and make a booking right away, right? I might have to think about it a little bit more, decide what I'm doing over five days, find a few other things, plan up my trip, and then decide that I'm ready to book my five days in Lisbon, for example. 
So Travis actually also enables the creators to be able to save that from creator inspiration, um, allow travels to do that, plan their trips out, come back when they're ready at the point to make their booking decision um, and still book there and create as well. So in a card of them. So I have a question from a, a, a sort of, you know, a landscape perspective, you know, it seemed, it seemed to me that a big part of the creator economy and the, and what's happened here is sort of this trust that was built between the travel and between you know, the consumer and the influencer, right? It's sort of like this really authentic, non-transactional trust where, um, you know, I as a consumer, I get to, to enjoy, get inspiration from and learn from these creators who are doing this out of the, out of the will of their heart and their interest. And, and it's very sort of pure and authentic, right? I'm, and, and what I'm curious about is as you're introducing economics into this, into the behavior, how does that change, do you think, the creator economy landscape or my, my relationship with creators now that we've introduced sort of some economics yeah. into this relationship? Yeah. If anything, I think it will empower creators to be doing more of what they are doing for a longer period of time um, and to create even more value for the, for the travelers consuming their content. Um, and the reason why I say this is because... If we look at the way that, you know, influencers and creators, um, and their role has evolved in a the world, they definitely haven't, I definitely think they, they are viewed as more trusted, uh, sources right now. Um, if we might recall definitely five or so years ago before the pandemic, uh, what really started to happen in pockets in the travel space, especially was, I would say a little bit of a backlash, you know, people kind of going, Influencers are a little bit like overrated. It's a bit transactional, actually. You know, how likely am I to wear a flowy red dress at the top of a mountain? And they're doing it just because they're getting paid to travel the world. And um, there was definitely a phase where there was perhaps a little bit of distrust or people were starting to understand and, you know, interrogate more about the ge- genuine and uh, authenticity of, of influencers there. But I would say since then, you know, I think the, 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 the pace of change happened so quickly that right now, um, we have definitely seen a shift away from that and creators themselves of different sizes. When I talk about creators, um, I mostly talk about micro, uh, micro creators under a hundred K. Um, and they are a lot more conscious about how genuine, how authentic, you know, they are providing value to their audiences because um, we know today that consumers are absolutely critical of that, you know, and I think the only way that they are able to find their niche and their place, um, as distinguishable from another creator out there is to actually be, uh, genuine who, to who they are. And in travel, it means my style of travel, you know, uh, my budget of travel, uh, you know, my preferences in travel. And those things make up what it is, um, unique. To me as a creator and therefore that's definitely through my own unique distinction that my followers have that credibility and trust in what i do so i guess i would say you know from a psychology perspective um there's a lot of elements and, and transitions that happened over time that has led to where we are today and that building of trust and credibility between consumers and and creators um that means that we are uh, in a space that's more trusted today and more valuable today than we probably were at even five years ago. So if we're looking at the world, you know, in five years now, and we're thinking, okay, well, how does this whole, you know, travel influence economics thing work? How, how do you envision, you know, with Travis, without Travis, you know, how do, how do you envision yeah. this landscape shaping, you know, in the next five yeah. years, what, where are we going to end up? Mm-hmm. Um, well, we definitely view it with Travis in mind. We definitely see a world with Travis in mind where, um, you know, it grows from what it is today as a creator monetization tool where creators can earn from just hotels to become a platform that becomes a core part of a creator's workflow. And it's enabling, you know, more creators than ever to be able to monetize from their travel recommendations. And when I say travel, um, it grows across a, a whole suite of categories. So not just hotels, but also experiences as well as, um, accessories. So like outfits as well as, um, you know, bags and things like that. Anything within a context of travel. Now, what that really means is that that enables, uh, travelers actually a much more 
a consolidated experience as well, right? So, you know, being able to discover um, uh, suggestions or recommendations that's already been, you know, to an extent vetted or curated by someone who's been trusted out there provides a certain level of credibility for you to warrant spending a bit more time to dig in a little bit more, right? And for us, our vision is to be able to let travelers discover, plan, and book any of your travel needs within the one place that's enabled by creator recommendations. Right. Do you imagine any major shifts that will need to happen as it, along with these economics that will enable for this vision of yours to, to come to play? Are there different, you know, big movements or big shifts that we expect the market to have over these years? Um, I think the biggest, um, maybe part of the puzzle that I haven't quite spoken about yet is probably industry as part of the puzzle. So I've talked about consumers, you know, we've talked a lot about consumer trust, um, you know, importance of creators playing that role. Um, but that piece of this puzzle and ecosystem is definitely the brands themselves. And I think brands coming to the table and, um, you know, jumping on the, the value of this will actually help us amplify it even more so. So what I mean by that is that ultimately, you know, the more that creators have the ability to, you know, there's an incentive for them to earn from the content that they're already sharing, right? That actually means that for brands or a hotel, for example, um, hotels are able to get wider reach of new consumers in new markets that they might not have ever been able to reach before. Um, and instead of how a lot of, you know, influencer marketing campaigns currently work today, um, a brand has to pay usually upfront for a defined scope, irrespective of how the content actually performs, which means it's hard to track ROI and proof all of that. So this actually gives a different, it, it realigns, I suppose, the incentive between the brand, which is driving down purchases and conversions with creators being able to earn from that point as well. Amazing. No, I think just a, it's a really fascinating world that you're in, um, thinking about how you know, people make decisions in general and how different people influence those decisions and how all of that plays into, you know, something that's really, really big from an economics perspective, you know, really tectonic shifts in how companies are different, you know, offerings like hotels and different experiences are, are looking at the way that they are able to get, you know, in front of the eyes of the cust of the consumers and then ultimately the decision point, which I think is just, it's just fascinating. And uh, Nicole, I really want to thank you for being here and for taking the time to, to join this episode with me. I really, really enjoyed it. Wishing you best of luck with Travis and in general for all of us with this new creator economy world. It sounds like it has, it's going to have amazing benefits for a lot of people and I'm excited to see where it goes. So thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you, Michael, for letting me, um, you know, be on here and sharing my story of what we're building at Travis too. Oh, 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 oh,